My belly hurts. The emergent approach to abdominal pain. Abdominal pain is the most common reason people present to emergency departments in the United States. In 2010, over 10 million people presented to U.S. emergency departments with abdominal pain, and that made up 8% of all visits to U.S. emergency departments. So as emergency physicians, it's critical that we know how to care for patients with abdominal pain. Are abdominal pain visits increasing? They certainly are. Over a period of time, patients presenting with chest pain slightly decreased, patients presenting with abdominal pain persistently increased. So while all these patients come to the emergency department with abdominal pain, are they coming for less serious reasons? Well, the answer is no. Even though patients who present with chest pain are consistently being diagnosed with acute cornea syndrome less, patients who present with abdominal pain who are diagnosed with a quote-unquote serious diagnosis is remaining stable. Therefore, it is critical that we know how to appropriately evaluate the acute presentation of abdominal pain. Of all the chief complaints, abdominal pain might be the one in which a good history and physical is the most important. We need to use our history and physical to direct us in our workup and our management. So let's talk about some key components of the history and physical in patients with abdominal pain. First, the quality of pain. Classically, abdominal pain can be thought of as visceral, which is dull, aching, poorly localized, compared to somatic pain, which is sharp and well localized. If you think about the things that cause these types of pains, it can help lead you to a diagnosis. So, for patients with visceral pain, they're usually having some sort of process that's causing stretch, distension, or contraction, or maybe even lack of blood flow to an abdominal organ. That, compared to somatic pain, which is caused by peritoneal irritation, that can be done by inflammation of an organ or the pooling of blood and fluids. So think about the type of pain, and it might lead you more towards a diagnosis. Also important is the onset of that pain. Is the pain sudden onset? Well, if it is, it may be due to rupture, twisting, and perforation. What I like to think of as the snap, crackle, and pop of abdominal pain. So rupture could, of course, be a vascular event, such as a dissection or a AAA rupture, or an ectopic rupturing. Twisting, of course, can be volvulus of the intestine or torsion of the testicles or the ovaries. And, of course, perforation is self-explanatory. More gradual onsets of pain can be seen in obstruction and infections, such as diverticulitis. Finally, intermittent-type pain is seen in colic, which can be, of course, biliary or renal, and can also be seen in intestinal spasms. The next thing to consider is the location of the pain. This is super important in abdominal pain. And it all starts with embryology, when the embryo has a foregut, midgut, and hindgut, because each of these areas develop into a very specific part of the abdomen. And which organs are found in the foregut, midgut, and hindgut can clue you in based on where the abdominal pain is located. Let's take a look. The foregut organs lead to pain in the epigastric region. These are the organs of the upper abdomen. Meanwhile, organs in the midgut localize to the periumbilical region. This includes the appendix. That's why classically in appendicitis, you get vague periumbilical type pain. And finally, organs that develop from the hindgut cause pain localized in the pelvic region. 
when it comes to the exam, don't forget to include a GU exam when necessary. Remember, in men, testicular pathology can often present as lower abdominal pain. Now that you've completed your history and physical, you're ready to order off a bunch of tests to figure out what exactly is causing this patient's abdominal pain. But that's not what we're going to cover in our lecture here today. Instead, we're going to talk about how we're going to try to help alleviate this pain. Because we don't want to wait for these diagnostic studies to come back to start treating the patient's pain. We want to do it right away. So first, let's get something out of the way. Giving pain medications to a patient does not harm your ability to make a diagnosis. This is a long-standing myth which has been debunked over many, many years and many, many studies. Giving a patient pain medications early does not, quote-unquote, mask their symptoms. So give patients pain medication early. Now let's talk about those medications. Opioids are probably the most commonly used pain medication in patients presenting with acute abdominal pain. They're best for patients with severe abdominal pain, and they're effective in nearly all intra-abdominal pathology. Opioids, however, have many well-established side effects, and unfortunately, many of these side effects may worsen patients' already existing GI symptoms, such as nausea, vomiting, and constipation. And of course, we're all aware of the potential for addiction and abuse. So what else is there out there? Well, ketamine is a medication that's more and more being used for acute abdominal pain. There's really only one study that shows the use of ketamine in severe abdominal pain in the emergency department. But there have been many studies that show its use in the perioperative setting, especially in patients with severe abdominal pain who are opioid tolerant. Ketamine has its expected CNS effects when given at a subassociative dose, but is usually very well tolerated. NSAIDs can be used in the treatment of abdominal pain, and there's two specific situations in which they're very good, and that's biliary and renal colic. Studies done on these patients have shown NSAIDs to be as or more effective than opioids in the treatment of these conditions and should be considered a first-line treatment. NSAIDs, of course, can worsen conditions such as gastritis and can exacerbate GI bleeding and should certainly be avoided in patients in which these are concerned. Next is acetaminophen. Acetaminophen is a great choice for mild to moderate abdominal pain and now can be given intravenously It obviously should be avoided in people with liver concerns, and it may also cause some nausea and vomiting in the intravenous form. The histamine 2 receptor antagonists are used in situations in which we need acid suppression, such as GERD and gastritis. They work relatively quickly and are very well tolerated, although they will make some people feel a little sleepy. Proton pump inhibitors are medications also used in situations where acid suppression is desired. Like the H2 blockers, it can be used in gastritis and is considered first-line treatment in peptic ulcer disease. It does not work as fast as the H2 antagonists and has a little bit more of a side effect profile, but is in fact a stronger acid-reducing medication. Antispasmodics, such as dicyclamine and Donatol, which contains multiple different medications, are used in patients with intestinal spasm, such as those seen in, in irritable bowel syndrome, and can be used in both biliary and renal colic, although are thought to be less effective than NSAIDs and opioids. The antispasmodic effect of these medications is because they are anticholinergic medications. Because they're anticholinergic medications, they do have an expected cytopreck profile of dryness, constipation, and dizziness. 
Finally, lidocaine is a medication which is starting to become popular to use in patients with abdominal pain as an adjunct to opioids in the perioperative setting. It's shown to have effect in the treatment of renal colic, and one case report reports lidocaine working effectively in a patient with a bowel obstruction. One very specific situation is narcotic bowel syndrome. This is a process that's been described in people with chronic abdominal pain. These patients with long-standing pain, other medications stop working and they start relying on opioids as treatment for their pain. Of course, we know that with opioid use, you can get problems with GI motility, including constipation, nausea, vomiting, and even ileus. And when these occur, you have worsening of abdominal pain. When the abdominal pain worsens, people require escalating doses of opioids, and a cycle ensues. This can be a very difficult cycle to break. In the emergency department, we may not be able to solve these patients' narcotic bowel syndrome in our short amount of time with them, but there are th some things we can do. We can provide symptomatic treatment to their motility problems by prescribing a probe motility agent such as metoclopramide or erythromycin. We can avoid the use of opioids and potentially worsen their condition, and we can refer them to addiction counseling when appropriate. So in conclusion, today we talked about the emergent approach to abdominal pain. As emergency physicians, we're going to see a lot of abdominal pain in our careers, and we know, need to know how to approach it. The best way to do that is with a good history and physical. That way, we can use our findings to direct our workup and to determine our management. And as for that management, we should treat abdominal pain early. We shouldn't wait till we get test results back but treat it appropriate with an appropriate medication as soon as possible to alleviate our patient's pain. Thank you for your time.